All right, here is a live and built version of my H-Bridge motor controller. Presently, I do not have a motor attached to it because I wanted to introduce two safety devices for doing these. But anyway, let's look at what we have here. You have These two switches are forward and reverse. That's an Arduino Nano. That's four of... Uh, that's pin, uh, PB... Uh, 8 through 12 is through these four resistors. The H bridge itself is consists of these four transistors here. These two on the side drive the PNP transistors up here. And notice to this all the way to the side, let's scoot it over just a little bit and focus in on that. Instead of hooking, well, let's do this. This is a LM317 current limiting circuit. If I wire up something wrong or program it wrong, this prevents me from damaging the parts or damaging the uh, motor. The motor is presently not wired in. Over here are two LEDs. Let's press a switch. You notice, let's zero in on that just a bit so you can see it better. Okay, I press one switch, that LED comes on. Press the other switch after a slight delay, that LED comes on. These LEDs are wired back to back. So one polarity turns on one LED, and the other polarity turns on the other LED. This way I know that I have my voltages properly switching. Alright, everything's turned off. Just to let you see the voltmeter that's connected across this, you notice the, watch the LEDs versus the voltage. You notice the one LED is on, I have 15 volts. Let's reverse the polarity. The other LED comes on, we got the negative polarity. This is what your H-bridge is supposed to do. It's supposed to swap the polarity on whatever is on the motor connections. So we know our programming, wiring, and so forth on the H-bridge is correct. In addition, let's zoom in a little bit. You notice this little light bulb is not lighting up. This is connected across the current limiting circuit so that if I get a short or draw a lot of power, it's going to light up in proportion to the current draw. Particularly if it's more current than what the LM317 can handle. Alright, here we go. We finally got the motor attached. I'm going to turn it on. You notice the LED. You notice the motor is running counterclockwise. The LED, the light bulb is lit up just a little bit, and we have this LED on. Let's reverse the polarity. You notice the motor stopped before it started spinning again. And all this light bulb is indicating is that the motor is drawing more than the resistor control for the LM317 is allowing. So it's dropping a few more volts, which is okay. What's the point of this device? What if I had a motor that was stalled? Let's stall the motor. Watch the light bulb. I could stop the motor dead and not blow up the circuit. That's what it's there for. The LM317 limits my motor current to a safe value and if I short out something if I stall the motor or wire the H bridge wrong it won't hurt anything to shut it completely off I'm going to hit reset again again counterclockwise when I press the switch 
stops and reverses. This is a point that a lot of people aren't getting. When you're starting, when you reverse polarity on these motors, let it stop first. Give it a chance. And that's in the programming. And you've got to get your programming correct. All right. So this is a fun part of this. Uh, I have a separate video on how to program this. Um, I'll give you a quick look at the schematic. Then we'll have a separate video on how to program this device. Thanks for listening. Let's just take a quick look at the hardware. This is our H-Bridge, of course. It consists of two driver transistors for the uh, PNP Darlingtons or Bipolars, whichever one you use. In the case of these TIP 124s and 120s, they have built-in internal diodes, so you don't need external diodes. Looking over here, um, I have switches connected to ground from digital pin 2 and 3. And how does, and if you notice here, digital pin 8 will drive this driver and Q1. Digital pin 9 will drive Q2. Digital pin 11 will drive Q4. And digital pin 10 will drive the TIP41 and Q3. Basically, to get this to work, you have to turn on Q2 or Q3 together or Q1 or Q4, never cut on Q3 or Q4 or Q2 or Q1 at the same time, or your light bulb that you saw earlier is gonna nicely light up. And that's why the current limiting circuit we saw um, is needed. And here's your quick review, and this is the safety circuit. Uh, it's using an LM317 with a 2.7 ohm resistor. It limits my current to 460 milliamps. I put a light bulb across the input and the output because as the current, it will maintain the current level, but if anything shorts, the voltage will be dropped across the LM317 as opposed to blowing up something. And that's why the light bulb lights up. And as one quick, this is a quick, easy indicator that you would put across a motor if you want to. I would put it in there before I put in a motor while I'm programming. And this is a quick indicator of voltage polarity reversal. The one LED will light up in one direction. The other LED will light up in the other direction. So that's just a quick review of the hardware.